Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Dan Dan, the Navy Man, and welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Today, we're talking about a very exciting book, and that is Beyond Order by Jordan B. Peterson. This book came out just a few months ago, and everybody is so excited that it has come out. We weren't sure if he was gonna be releasing another book, and he has, and here it is. And so I'm so glad to be able to talk about this book with you today. So buckle up, and let's go. My goal today is not to just read this book to you, but I do want to talk about Jordan Peterson, some of his other books, and the key ideas that I think are foundational to the writing of this book. So Jordan Peterson is a pretty popular philosopher. He's a university professor, and he's become a public figure and an icon. The people that generally listen to his lectures and read his books are people that want to Yes, just learn because he does have a lot of very interesting little tidbits of information that he gives out. But generally people that listen to his lectures and watch his books are people that want to develop personally. People that see that they are deeply flawed and want to learn more about the world around them and themselves and how they can grow and change their lives to be better, more functional, happier people. At least that's kind of why I've gotten into the whole Jordan Peterson scene. So to understand Jordan Peterson a little bit, I wanna get into his first book, just touch on it, Maps of Meaning. Jordan Peterson, in this book and throughout his lectures and in all of his other books, he loves to use mythology, religion, ancient teachings and stories. He'll even go so far as using Disney movies or the famous Harry Potter series. And what he does is he takes these seemingly simple stories like let's say Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, where he goes in to fight the basilisk and he says, that's not just a story of a boy fighting a lizard. No, this is the iconic hero that's within us all. And the lizard would represent some antagonist that we all face because who doesn't have conflict in our life? Who doesn't have some difficult scenario that they're facing? And so, this was just one example of how he takes these seemingly simple stories and dissects them and abstracts them and shows them how they're very relatable to your life and to my life. And if you read this book, you're absolutely gonna see that happen. So when Maps of Meaning came out, it was not received very well. Jordan Peterson is very intelligent. He's very smart, but he seemed to struggle in the area of making his ideas translatable to his readers. He gets way too thick into the weeds to the point that you're reading his book and you're like, where am I? Where am I at in this chapter? And I will say that as he's gotten, by the time he's gotten to this book, he's gotten much better at making a smooth read throughout the chapter. He's made his thoughts much more organized. And if you're a Jordan Peterson fan, that is very important. That is very great because that is the only way that you're gonna be able to take this brilliant man's thoughts and be able to really digest them, to understand them and apply them to yourself. That same problem of difficulty and understanding and getting too thick into the weeds and kind of just tangling you in this spider web of words also appeared in his second book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote for Chaos. But this book was received very well and in fact, there are so many testimonies from people who said, hey, Jordan Peterson, I read your book and really I just took my dull, chaotic life that was sad and not full of meaning whatsoever and I was able to really take your ideas and apply them and I've been able to create a little bit of order in my life and I'd be able to become the iconic hero in my own story. That's just absolutely amazing. Any author can say, hey, do this and it'll change your life. But not every author can actually get the same results that Jordan Peterson has been seeing. Like they say, the proof is in the pudding. And so his second book was much more well received, but you definitely get lost in the sauce whenever you're reading about lobsters and fighting each other and all these other things that he seems to have resolved in his third book, Beyond Order. 12 more rules for life. So now we're on to beyond order, 12 more rules for life. Once you get into the foreword, Jordan Peterson says, yes, these books go together, but I don't want them to need each other. 
His intentions were for every individual book to be able to be read solo. You could just read Beyond Order without reading 12 Rules for Life and Antidote for Chaos. You can read this book by itself or any of his other books by themselves and be able to learn something and gain something from it. You don't need the other books as a crutch or as a foundation, but I think that it is worthwhile to build that foundation because you can sort of learn how he thinks and how he speaks and his little nuances and it makes it much more enriching whenever you go to read this book. So we're talking about Beyond Order, we're talking about the foreword. And the foreword is so vital to the rest of the book because it talks about the place that Jordan Peterson was in while he wrote it. If you follow him at all, you'll know that he was having a lot of family health crises, he was having his own personal health crisis, that he was struggling from benzodiazepine withdrawal, that he was dependent on it, he went from hospital to hospital, they even induced him into a coma for a period of days. And that struggle, that suffering really comes out into his writing because Jordan Peterson doesn't just believe that hardship is just something that smacks you in the face and that's the end of it, but it, there's something deep and meaningful to be learned from suffering because he thinks there's something deep and meaningful to be learned from most things. So like I said, I'm not just gonna read this book to you. This is something that I want you to jump in on your own and I think that it would be very beneficial for you to read Jordan Peterson's book. Specifically today, we're talking about Beyond Order. So to give you a taste, I'm gonna read off his chapters and then we're gonna talk about it a little bit. So rule number one, do not carelessly denigrate social institutions or creative achievement. Rule number two, imagine who you could be and then aim single-mindedly at that. Rule number three, do not hide unwanted things in the fog. Rule number four, notice that opportunity lurks where responsibility has been abdicated. Rule number five, do not do what you hate. Rule number six, abandon ideology. Rule number seven, work as hard as you possibly can on at least one thing and see what happens. Rule number eight, try to make one room in your home as beautiful as possible. Rule number nine, if old memories still upset you, write them down carefully and completely. Rule number 10, plan and work diligently to maintain the romance in your relationship. Rule number 11, do not allow yourself to become resentful, deceitful, or arrogant. Rule number 12, be grateful in spite of your suffering. So while I don't think that every chapter is interlocked with the other chapters, I do think that there is a common thread to be seen here. And it is really just the basic principle of growth through suffering. In the Navy, our motto is forged by the sea. And we say, smooth seas never made a skilled sailor, which pretty much just means if life's easy, you're not growing. Jordan Peterson is all about the individual taking an inward look at oneself, seeing flaws, fears, etc., and conquering those things and growing. And one thing that really pushes you to grow is suffering. Suffering can easily take you from a place of peace and order where you're just content and still and push you over to the other side, chaos, where you're forced to battle giants and do great things. Like I said earlier, Jordan Peterson is all about mythology and religion and ancient stories and abstracting them and making them relevant in today's life. And one character and story that really represents suffering that Jordan Peterson's been talking a lot about in his podcast is the Christ figure. The, is the Christ figure, the figure of Christ. And there's one central story in Christ's life where he takes on the burden of the cross. One thing Jordan Peterson says is to take the heaviest burden you can get, put it on your shoulders and just walk with it and that'll grow you. And that is really seen here in the story of Christ burdening the cross. And in Christian circles, this story is absolutely key to everything they believe because Christ is carrying a heavy burden, selflessly taking on something that is burdensome and walking up a hill with it in order to sacrifice himself for the greater good of all. It's very 
personal. It's inward. It's not Christ going around and being a social justice warrior and yelling at people and being angry. No, it, he has taken the burden on himself. He is enduring suffering for other people, for the betterment of all mankind. And I think there's a reason that Jordan Peterson keeps circling back on this idea, because I think that he believes this idea is key to our own personal growth, our own communal success. Through the book, he talks about how giving really is better than receiving, how selflessness really does come back to you. And I think that's so perfectly summarized in the story of Christ taking on the cross to be crucified for everybody else, for him to gain nothing but give it all. And that really does just fall back in on the basic idea that growth comes through suffering. That whenever life is easy, we tend to be more placid and to just chill out and enjoy everything that's going on. And when hardships and suffering come your way, it is the knight fighting the dragon, the age old tale. It is Harry Potter fighting the basilisk. And through those experiences, that's where we learn and grow as individuals and strengthen ourselves. Okay guys, wrapping it all up here, Jordan Peterson really hit it out of the park. He took the things that were negative reviews about his other books and he definitely seemed to have straightened that out. This is a book written through a man's suffering, through his hardships, and it really comes out on the pages absolutely beautifully. He has a brilliant mind, and there is so much to be learned from the works of Jordan Peterson, specifically Beyond Order. So I hope that you guys pick this book up. If you haven't watched his lectures or read his other books, go ahead and get on that as well. If you've read the book or are currently reading it, let me know what you think. How's it going so far? What was your favorite quote or chapter? What's going on? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me that thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. I hope that you guys read this book. And I hope that you guys have an absolutely fantastical, wonderful day. Have a great day, guys.